Hello and welcome to hopefully the last video dedicated to using Parallax in Godot and in Escoria. In this final video uh, we will uh, ask ourselves what is drawn in front of one? Of what? As you know, in point-and-click adventure games uh, very often we have to draw stuff in front of other stuff and it can be a bit counterintuitive, for example if the player walks behind a tree or in front of the background. And when the parallax is involved, it can bit, get a bit tricky. So this video will hopefully help you uh, managing it. If you remember the previous videos, I'm going to run our test scene again uh, with this Corea. Uh, we always had the player in front of everything. And it's not as obvious as you may think, because what decides where the player appears in this uh, scene tree. If I uh, reduce, if I collapse the parallax background, uh, nothing uh, materializes where the player should be drawn. There is no node for the player. So how is it drawn? Uh, in older versions of Escoria, you would have a node called ESC background. It's still there. And it was making it extra confusing for me because uh, if you're used to making point and click adventure games, you you might imagine that the background is where the engine will draw not just the background, but since there is no uh, no uh, no other node for the player, it might be where it draws everything when it computes the every frame. So I was trying to put this ESC background as one of the parallax layers, uh, the one that moves at the same speed as the camera. And it was a complete disaster because then I was not in control at all of what was appearing in front of one, of what. It took me a long time to understand something. The first thing that you need to understand, especially in those new versions where you don't need an ESC background node, is that the parallax is entirely independent from everything that is drawn by the point-and-click engine, especially the player, but also the text that appears on top of the player when he speaks and stuff like that. You can totally imagine your parallax background as just a simple sprite. It's the sprite that represents the background. It doesn't matter if it's made of others, uh, several sprites moving at different speeds. You have to imagine that it's one block, one sprite, and you can draw whatever you want, wherever you want, independently from that block. What do I mean by that? Uh, for example, if this is one block, then the question remains, why is it drawn behind the player? Well, the first thing that you need to notice is that when you click on your parallax background, you have a property named layer, and you will see that it's created at minus 100. You see, when I create a new parallax background, out of the box, it's minus 100. So, hmm, I wonder what we could do with that. So let's see what happens if I change it to 100 and I run the game again. Wow, look at that. The player appears Behind, you can sort of see the sprite a little bit there, uh, move it uh, in between the cracks of the of the sprite. So from that, we can infer that if it was at, at minus 100 and we could see the player, and now it's at plus 100 and we can't see the player, we can imagine that the Escoria engine draws everything at zero. I'm going to set it back to minus 100. So that's the first thing we learn. Everything at negative coordinates, uh, as, as far as we talk about parallax, will appear behind the player, and stuff at positive uh, layer value will appear on top of the player. That's very interesting for us. Second observation we can make. Look what happens if I add a sprite. And I want to put it behind the parallax. I'm going to put uh, yet again my faithful 
I'm going to put some random random sprite in there. So here in the scene tree, it's in front of the parallax, and that's very strange because because in if you look at the scene tree, normally the order of drawing is from uh, top to bottom, which means that the more towards the bottom something is, the more on top it should be when drawing the scene. And yet this sprite is in front of everything. So my suggestion would be don't try to have a fixed image behind the parallax. Just do it like I did it. In your parallax background, add this parallax layer at the very top, so it means behind everything, and just set the scale to 0, 0 so that it never moves, and there you go, it's behind everything. Uh, now, you might ask yourself, okay, we know how to put the parallax background behind the player or in front of the player, but what if I want both? What if I want some mountains to move slowly behind the player? and some lampposts to move in front of the player. Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is to create two parallax backgrounds. Remember what I said, it doesn't matter how complex they are inside, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, delete, I'm gonna split it in two. So I duplicate and I delete what's behind in this one and I delete but I want to be in front in this one. And I'm setting this one, like we said before, at plus 100. And as I was about to say, it does not matter what's inside of those parallax backgrounds. You have to imagine them as just one big sprite. And then it's simply the layer value that decides where they are, and the player is always at zero. And there you go. You can see that the player is in front of that whole uh, mess that constitutes the parallax background uh, node, but it's behind this parallax background 2 node. So there we are, another problem tackled. Finally, I want to talk to you about one last thing, is that you will see that all those parallax layers they have a z index value and you might be tempted to think that in order to decide if something is drawn in front of the player or behind the player you just have to add this z index value to the base value the layer value for example if i have minus 100 here and if i decide that the z index is plus 200, then minus, min minus 100 plus 200 equals plus 100. So isn't it the same as this whole new parallax background that we created directly at plus 100? Answer, no, it is not. The Z, Z index, you don't have to take my word for it, you can try it. The Z index only lets you change which parallax layer is in front of which parallax layer inside the parallax background. So for example, if I wanted this one to be behind this one, and if for some whatever weird, weird reason I was not just able to change their order in the scene tree like this, if I'm not able to change that order, I can still set a value for Z index for this one, for example, 200, and this one should have a lower value, for example, I don't know, 100, and what happens when I run the game? I observe that... Uh, I was expecting to see this one in front of that one. Well, I'm gonna say just whatever, it does not matter, because I was just trying to demonstrate something, but as you saw from the previous minutes of that, of that video, we have met all our use cases, all the use cases that we need 
in a point and click adventure game we have learned how to make all the layers uh, move at the desired speed we have learned how to make layers within a parallax appear in front of other layers just by using the order of the nodes and we have learned how to make stuff appear in front of the player by using a different parallax uh, so that's all for today and I hope that now you are an expert of parallax in Godot and in Escoria enjoy, bye bye